Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mixing Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create a cool IK particle slash Uber Tracer slash Plexus type effect inside of Blender for free with animation nodes. So for those of you who aren't familiar, IK particles is a uh, Blender add-on that's 20 bucks, makes stuff that looks like this. This is exactly what we're going to make it happen today, but for zero dollars and just a little more work. Uber Tracer is what I know best because that's what, you know, Cinema 4D has. That's 50 bucks. It's got, you know, probably some more more stuff, but it's cool. And Plexus, everyone knows After Effects, you see this in so many, so many commercials. And it's 250 bucks. So luckily, Mr. Jacques here has made a fantastic add-on called Animation Node. So go over and install that and then hop into Blender and we'll get started. So we've got an empty scene here. Looks good. Shift A, we're going to go ahead and add, um, we'll say an Icosphere. I'll just leave that at default for now. That looks good. Then we're going to go ahead and add a quick little particle group to this. So... Go to our particles, new particle system. We will name this web system because it's going to look kind of like a web and it's good to name stuff. Um, we'll set this down to a lower number for now, like 250, just because we're going to be, um, there's some potential for adding a lot of geometry very quickly if you aren't careful with this sort of stuff. And that happens with any of the plugins. So we'll get that. Um, all this looks good. We're going to make our timeline a little shorter. We're going to make it 90 so you know that I am, you know, an old Cinema 4D user and 90 frames is what I'm comfortable with as my default. We have them emit from faces, good. Uh, velocity is fine. We're gonna go down to our field weights and we're gonna set our gravity to zero. So now if we play it with Alt A, we see you just get a bunch of particles coming out. That looks pretty good. We'll just add a little bit of Brownian motion, which is like eddy currents in the air. We'll add a little more. And what Brownian motion is, is like, you know, whenever you look at a window and you see dust particles and they're sort of moving around with their funny little little things, that's basically brownie motion. Add a little bit of drag, hit Alt A, play again. That's looking pretty good. A little bit more drag. Shift A. We're gonna add some turbulence in here. Whoops. Shift A. Go and add a force field. Get a little bit of turbulence going. It's really cool to add a bunch of turbulences on top of each other. We're just gonna do one for this tutorial. And you go over to our dynamic section. Strength, make it something like 7. Uh, increase the size to something like 5. Then turn the flow up a little bit. I like the flow control. I think it's very cool. Go back, select our particle system again. Now you can see we're getting this cool, cool thing going on. So I might even scale this down a little bit. And then bring our velocity up. There you go. And now I have this cool little popping motion before they, the drag sets in. So bring this down just a little bit. And now we'll say that this is just the best particle system you've ever seen. Which I think it is. Look at that. Great. I'll go ahead and save this real quick. So. All right. Now that it's saved, we can get into the fun part of this thing. So just like normal, we'll drag our timeline up and then back down again and hit Shift F3 to enter animation nodes, create a new one, call this Uber Tracer because, you know, that's what I'm used to from back in the old, the good old days. And now we'll get into the fun part. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need to get um, some data from the particle system. So hit Shift A, go down to Particles. And then from object, drop this in here, scroll in, and then we've got our emitter selected, which we should name emitter because we're responsible CG artist, artists, plural. Now we've got our emitter in there. And now from here, we're going to need to take the active system, which gets the uh, active particle system. The particle system once outputs a list of multiple particle systems. We just need the one for now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that into a particles data node. Just put it right in there. And now we're going to get the locations of the alive particles. Great, we are rocking and rolling. So still nothing's happening, but you know, we're not done yet. So now we need to use this information to draw lines between particles that are closest to each other. So how are we gonna find points that are close to each other? Well, we're going to find close points. Drop this in here, locations to points. We'll set the amount to something like Four, which I'm pretty sure is just how many connections a particle can make, but I'm sure that is clear on the animation nodes manual. And then we are going to shift A, splines, create from edges. So now you can take this edges output, 
plug it into edges indices and then vertices from locations. Now, if we hit Alt A, still nothing's happening. <laughs> but that's because we haven't made splines yet. So what we're going to do is Shift A, spline, output object, and now we'll be ready to rock and roll. So we'll plug splines into splines. And then when you do this, you have to enable it. And then in once an object, so we'll just have it create one. And now look at this. Look at that. Isn't this gorgeous? So now that is all rocking and rolling. You can see, you know, it behaves just like you think it would with particles. You can make all your cool Nike commercials now. But if you see, we'll add a quick light in the scene and drop a new emission shader on here and shift Z. You'll see we're not getting any renders. That's because we need to add some geometry because right now these are just splines. So you can do all sorts of fun spliny things with them like bevel. So enable our bevel here and just make it like 0 0.01 or something. And now you get a little bit of geometry and hit shift Z. Now look at that. So, you know, if you want to make your emitter part of your scene, that's great. Or you can also, whatever you usually do is to turn off render emitter, shift Z. And now you're just getting some geometry. And look at that, just that easy. For $0, you're getting this super powerful thing. You can obviously have, you know, lots of particle things going on and interacting with each other because animation notes is just so is just so stinking powerful. So if you had, you know, some multiple particle systems, you could take these different locations and you just make all sorts of crazy stuff happen. But for now, I'm going to call that good. What we can do is uh, let me just go ahead and Make this emitter real small. Hit Alt A to play again. Find a nice frame. Or actually, we'll animate it a little bit. So let's start it here. And go ahead and drop a keyframe in. Play forward a little bit there. Drop a keyframe in. Go back. Play through. Sweet. That's looking pretty good. We'll go frame this up so we've got a nice thumbnail. We will render our emitter again. Actually, let's go back to our emitter and we will change this to distance. It just nudge this up until it's getting what we want. You know, we could actually do, ooh, I hadn't even thought about this before, but shift D, make this amount, and then we can still always have you know, four-ish going, but it'll just make it denser in these little parts. Nice. We will also duplicate this object and plug it in here. And we'll create a new target. Excellent. Oop, I've also got to get the location from here. Nice. And now you just add a little more complexity. So you have this five. That looks pretty good. And now you get this extra density going on. So without that other thing, you lose this extra stuff in here with it that's looking good so now we'll turn this around get something that's framed halfway nice we'll make this sort of like a, a cyber comet thing so i'll actually scale this down a little more go back to the beginning play it through again nice it's looking good and now we'll make this this render happen so emitter, we will just do this real stupid simple. Emission, make this something like 100. Turn off our plane. So we don't need that, which should be named light. Top light. And then for this stuff, we will add a new material. We'll make it principled BSDF. Make it white. And then we'll give it a little bit of subsurf because subsurface is my fetish. And then we can do the other one. We'll give it principled also. We'll make this one like a pinky color. Just have it stay like that. See how that looks. And then my favorite, favorite part of Blender We'll add a cube, name it fog, new material, 
none there. Volume, volume scatter, density like 0.7, anisotropy like 0.92, which will make it look different. Uh, and now we'll save and let's just see what happens. A little shift Z action. Nothing's happening yet. Is this guy okay? Is it the fog's fault? Do I need to make this bevel bigger? Yeah, I don't mind making that bevel bigger. I can make that one bigger and this one a little smaller. Oh, obviously we're not rendering the emitter anymore. So we'll go ahead and render the emitter again. Now look at that. It's nice. We'll turn on the fog. That's too much fog. So we will drop this anistotropy up to 0.98, zero. I don't know. That doesn't look very good. So instead, keep that like that. And oh, you know what I bet would help if we added some GI in this. So to our fog, we will add a surface and we'll just do random diffuse. We'll go ahead and turn our light back on and see what that does. Let's turn this fog off. Yeah, even though I love fog a lot, we won't have it on for this one. Let's actually see if we render this without the emitter again. So I think I'll like that better. Yeah, that's nice. This looks like we halfway know what we're doing. So let's shift Z and we will shift A, add a camera, control alt zero to get the camera in the view N, lock camera to view, scoot this around. And this is one of my absolute favorite things about working in a 3D program is you can use whatever camera you want, no matter if you can afford it or not. So we're going to make our focal length something like 110, which is, you know, that's not good. But we can make our sensor size 70 mil. So look at that. Look, we can shoot 70 mil film for $0. We'll frame this around so it looks slightly less bad. It's not great, but I think it might just almost be good enough for YouTube. Nice. Give it another quick little save. Turn this guy off. Pop out of the camera view. Select some things we can pivot around. And now we'll add a little bit of depth of field. So turn our limits on so we can see where we're focusing. Focus right about there. Bring a radius up. I like using radius as opposed to f-stop just because I'm normally not modeling things to scale since I do a bunch of abstract stuff. So as much as my ego would like to use f-stop, radius tends to work a little better. Excellent. So we'll really blow this out a little bit. We're going pretty stylized here. Can I really not use any fog? Ah, I really want to use fog. That's a lot of fog. I mean, part of that is... I just want a little bit of fog, man. I always want more fog. Oh. Oh, nice. And then... No, I do really like the top just sterile light for this. I'll bring this up something more appropriate hop back in our camera lock camera to view scoot that guy over shift z so we can oop our fog things in the way so we just go ahead and change this from texture to wire that's not in our way move this around what was screaming at before is i was thinking the emitter was the focus of the object i mean can i just yeah, but really it's sort of this denser part in the middle that's the focus of the object. So I was framing for over here when I should have been framing for over here. Hit Shift Z again. Just save us a little bit of trouble. Go ahead and turn on border here. Nice. And I think that looks pretty decent. You know, obviously once we give it a little render. If you want your stuff to go faster, turn fog off because that absolutely destroys your render times and stuff, but I like fog a lot. I like adding volumetrics to everything, even though it kills, kills your render times. So anyway, 
Uh, sorry about that little tangent at the end that <laughs> took up most of the tutorial. You know, the first five minutes is basically all you need. It's probably about five minutes. But, you know, I think we got a lot of cool stuff done. Ooh, not done yet. Uh, this one. Over to our texture tab. Shift A. Shader. Add shader. Shift A. Shader. Emission shader. Nice. Give it a little blue. There we go. And now our fog really pops out a little more. Cool. All right. Now I'm happy with that. That's a cool looking thing. We can show that we have really two different systems here. So you can see this would be a super, super powerful thing. You could probably do the same thing with an object or a mesh. Um, yeah, you get vertex locations and probably do the same sort of thing. So you can do all sorts of cool stuff with this. It's really great. It's really great. Animation nodes is ridiculous. The fact that Jacques made it free, it makes him an internet hero. Blender is a lot of fun. Blender is free. Everything is cool. I've got some projects coming up that I'll use Blender for that I think is ridiculous that I can use a free program to do, which is crazy. Um, obviously the computer is not free that has to render it, but I mean, come on. Come on, I've rambled enough. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Especially remember, I'm pretty new to Blender, so if you have any good tips and tricks, leave those in the comments. I would love to read them. Also, if you're into color grading, compositing stuff, you know, check out mistymediacom slash products. Also, we've got a lot of color grading tutorials. If you're just here for Blender, I have so many DaVinci Resolve tutorials, it's ridiculous. In DaVinci Resolve, Housel has a free version, which is extraordinarily full-featured and fantastic. And great. Maybe I'll do a tutorial that make something in Blender and then color grades it in DaVinci Resolve. Wouldn't that just be synergistic as knobs? So once again, I'm with you with Mr. Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.